Hello and welcome to Lesson Scylla. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make use of Azure Bastion feature to remotely access your virtual machines in your Azure environment. Now, without Azure Bastion, your only way of accessing your virtual machines remotely from anywhere would be through RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol. So first of all, I'm going to show you the traditional way of accessing a virtual machine. So in order to access a virtual machine, you will need a public IP address, which I have assigned to this test virtual machine. And you have to go to connect, download the RDP file, and double click on that RDP file, enter the password. I'm just gonna enter the password here. And click yes to the prompt. And you will be connecting to your virtual machine over the public internet using RDP or remote desktop protocol. Now, it is not advisable to open RDP port of your virtual machine to the internet because if someone gets to know your public IP, they can deploy brute force attacks to your virtual machine or denial of service attacks as well. So, um, it is not the most secure way of accessing your Azure virtual machines remotely over the public internet. And also, because you need to access your virtual machine over the public internet using RDP, you're going to have to invest or spend money in a public IP address. And if you've got 10 virtual machines, that means you've got 10 public IPs that you're paying for which is not very cost efficient. Now, this is where Azure Bastion service comes into play. Azure Bastion service lets you access your virtual machines from anywhere in the world, as long as you've got an internet connection. And it uses HTTPS port, port 443, for your connection from wherever you are to Azure. And within Azure, it's using port 3389 or SSH for Linux devices, port 22. So this is a much secure way of accessing your virtual machines over the public internet. With Azure Bastion, you do not need a public IP address assigned to your virtual machine. And also you can enforce multi-factor authentication if you wish to do so to add an additional layer of security um, when it comes to authenticating users to your Azure portal. And with Azure Bastion, you're not simply clicking on an RDP file to connect. You are actually going through Azure portal and selecting the virtual machine that you want to connect and connect within the Azure portal, which is obviously much more secure. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how this is done. So what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to remove this public IP address because I do not need the public IP address. So I'm going to go to network settings, first of all, and go to my network card, and I'm going to um, disassociate my public IP address. Um, so I'm going to untick this checkbox. That means my public IP address will be removed from my virtual machine because I do not need it anymore since I'm going to use Azure Bastion service. So I'm just going to save my um, preferences now. Hopefully this should not take too long. While this is happening, I'm going to show you how to create an Azure Bastion service. So. One of the prerequisites for creating an Azure Bastion uh, service is you need to have an Azure Bastion subnet, which Azure is going to use. So I've only got one VNet in my test environment, which I have got this test virtual machine running. And in that VNet, I'm going to create another subnet that is dedicated to the Azure subnet service. So I'm going to click subnet. And I'm going to call it Azure Bastion Subnet. Now, this is a must. You must name your subnet this way. Otherwise, Azure would not recognize that subnet as an eligible subnet 
to deploy Azure Bastion service. Um, you can have a minimum of 26 um, notations. So at the moment, it's uh, 24. So I'm just going to select 26. Um, but you can leave it as 24 as well if you wish to do so. Um, I'm not going to change any of these other settings, simply a subnet named Azure Bastion subnet and an appropriate subnet within the range that is required by Azure subnet service with a minimum of 26 CIDR um, notation. So I'm going to click Save to add that subnet to my uh, VNet. Now, if you've got multiple VNets, you can deploy Azure Bastion on one of the VNets and make sure the VNets are peered if you're trying to access virtual machines which are not within the same VNet that the Azure Bastion subnet exists. So let's go to Azure Bastion. Click on Bastions and click Create. Now in here, you can select your resource group. I'm going to call it Bastion 1. Um, now obviously, this is a paid service. You can have basic and standard. By default, it goes into standard, but I'm going to go with basic, which is the cheapest one. It'll give you two instances, which are essentially Azure Virtual Machines, which are running this Azure Bastion service, which are not visible to us um, that essentially run this Bastion service. So you're going to get two instances of um, Azure Bastion. But if you go, if you have more people connecting via Azure Bastion, um, you might want to consider standard and increase the instance count. Um, obviously, this is going to cost you money, so be mindful of your actual requirement and and set the instance count according to that. So since this is a test um, environment, I'm just going to leave it at basic virtual network. I'm going to select my virtual network. I've got only one, and it's going to automatically select the proper subnet to run the Bastion service because we had gone into the VNet and created this uh, subnet specifically for this service. Now, Azure Bastion, the service itself, going to need a public IP address. Um, so it's going to create a new public IP address for that. So I'm just going to click Review and Create. Validation has passed. Now I'm going to click create once more to create this um, Bastion service. Now, creating of a Bastion, this um, deployment can take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for now. And once um, the uh, deployment has been completed, I will um, resume the video. Okay, so the Azure Bastion deployment actually took about five to 10 minutes for, for its deployment. Now that it's completed, I will show you how to use Azure Bastion and how to provide a standard user the permission to log into a virtual machine using Azure Bastion service. So let's go back to the VM. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, first of all, how to connect. Let me get rid of that. How to connect to a virtual machine using the Bastion service. So I've gone to my virtual machine now and under connect, click connect button. And in here, if you remember, when we started the tutorial, it was only giving me the option to use the native RDP method to connect to the virtual machine. And now you can see the Bastion uh, method is also available for me. So simply click go to Bastion and enter the username and the password. So 
To begin with, I'm going to use the local administrator account that I used uh, at the time of creating this virtual machine to log into this virtual machine. Um, so I'm just going to put my username and password in there and then click connect. And it's going to connect, click allow um, for clipboard access if you wish for that to happen. And as you can see now, I have successfully connected to my virtual machine within Azure portal using Azure Bastion service. Very easy, very secure way of accessing your virtual machines in Azure. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I used my local administrator account and my local administrator account or any local administrator account for that matter is already included in the RDP allow group for a virtual machine. So administrators by default are included and they can access the virtual machine by default. But what if you want to give a standard user access to a virtual machine in Azure using Azure Bastion. Let's find out how to do that. So I'm going to go to remote desktop settings first in my virtual machine. Click on allow remote access to your computer setting. Obviously it is turned on and click select users. In here, I'm going to add my standard user account, which is test user one. Let me just type the full name. Yep, so this is my standard user, um, which I'm gonna use in this tutorial, and I'm gonna show you how to give this test user access to the Azure Bastion and to the VM, and I'm gonna show you um, from a test user, from the standard user's perspective, how this is gonna look like. So the first things first, so the first thing to do is to provide um, RDP um, access or remote um, access to the virtual machine at the virtual machine's operating system level, which is what we are doing now. So I've added the test user, uh, I'm gonna click OK um, and click OK and click OK. So if I go back to my settings again, remote desktop settings, select users, you will see that test user is selected and which means the test user uh, account is allowed to RDP into this virtual machine. So I'm gonna click OK, OK. So that's the first step. And the next step is you need to provide Azure RBAC roles to the test user um, at these on these actual Azure resources. So I need to give test user one the reader role on the virtual machine, reader role on the network card, reader role on the Azure Bastion resource itself, and then reader role on the virtual network of the target virtual machine if the Bastion deployment is in a peered virtual network. For us in this tutorial, we just have one VNet. We don't have a peered virtual network set up, so the last setup is not required. And additionally, the user must have rights if required to connect to the VM. If the user is connecting to a Windows VM where RDP isn't a member of the local administrator group, they must be a member of the remote desktop users group, which is what we just did. We just gave the test user, which is a standard user account, um, permissions to remotely access uh, the virtual machine via RDP. So we've added that user to the RDP um, allowed users group. Uh, let's go to the virtual machine and click access control and role assignments. It will show you the current role assignments. I'm gonna add a role assignment. And then I'm gonna select the role reader Next, select members, and I'm gonna use test user one, preview and assign. 
And so I've done that for the virtual machine. And the second uh, step is I have to do that for the actual network card of the virtual machine. Uh, so this is the network card. I'm going to go to access control. Um, add, add role assignment, reader, next. And then I'm going to select my test user. Select, review, and assign. Um, and then I need to go to the actual bastion and provide the reader role access to my test user. Add role assignment, reader. Select my test user. All right, so I think we have given all the necessary permissions now. So the reader role on the virtual machine, reader role on the network interface card of the virtual machine, and reader role on the Azure Bastion resource. So that's all done. And um, let's go ahead and see how this is done from an end user, standard end user's perspective. So. In this uh, browser window, I'm using uh, Firefox um, for my test user. I've logged into my test standard users um, Azure account by going to portal.azure.com. As you can see up here, top right corner, test user um, is the account that I've used to sign in. So basically just follow the same steps that we did when we signed um when we used um, Azure Bastion to connect to the virtual machine um, for the first time when we were um, logging in using our administrator account. So as you can see, uh, when I go to virtual machines pane, I can now see the virtual machine um, that um, we just gave permissions to the uh, test user one account and um, go to connect. And you have the same option. Go to Bastion. And then basically we just put the password and the username and click connect and you will be connected to the Azure virtual machine. So guys, um, this is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as early as possible. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you and have a nice day.